for this welterweight championship fight. Four years, the difference in age between these two fighters, with some differences in height and a similar reach. We send it inside the octagon, we find Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, a referee in charge of the octagon, Eve Loving. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a kickboxer. Making his professional debut here tonight, he stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Hong Kong, introducing the challenger, international, and now introducing the champion. Fighting out of the red corner, this man is a grappler, holding a professional record of 29 wins, no losses. He stands five feet ten inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of the Republic of Dagestan, Russia, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending UFC welterweight champion of the world, Habib the Eagle, UFC belt on the line, protect yourself at all time, obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your corner. So here we go with round one, and when you have what looks like a classic matchup of striker versus grappler, it doesn't always play out that way, but given what these fighters said to us on Thursday, the game plan seemed pretty clear. They're very clear game plans, but which one of them is able to implement the game plan most effectively? The grappler will try to get forward, get close, try to secure takedowns. He's even willing to pull guard to make sure that he is in the grappling situation. The striker needs to stay at space. The striker needs to maintain distance and fight behind that beautiful jab he possesses. Big punch man over the top. I'll do this follow this one. You take more of these legs. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. So he postures up here and now figures to rain down some ground strokes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty from this position. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Nice punch by Nermago Medoff. Oh, goes to the roundhouse kick now and lands. Now we'll see if he can follow it up. What a devastating technique the roundhouse kick is. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Oh! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh! He didn't like that left hand. got through, that kick was blocked. Big power for Punch Land. Now he gets back to range. Oh, man. Hope to get hit with one of those knees to the body. Nermanko Meta gets hit with a kick. And he comes through with a big knee. Oh, he better start moving. He can't take too 
Mills up and touch. Well, he has certainly found the range and staying pretty busy here on the field. He's being busy, but it's also the timing and the accuracy that's allowing him to land so many attacks. So there's the horn. He got knocked down by a punch in that round, but he is able to survive. We'll see if they can make some adjustments. He's as tough as they come. He took that shot and he kept plodding forward. He got off of his butt. He got himself off of the canvas and tried to get right back to work. But he cannot take many more of these. You don't want to be the guy that's testing how tough that your chin is. Start to really worry about the wrestling, and there's that left hand from him. Oh! Oh! Serve him up. Go get him. Nurmagomedov goes for the clinch here, and this is just a means by which to recover. He is stuck. Whiffs on the straight right hand. Ooh, head kick lands. He's hurt. What a punch. All right, single collar tie now. Beautiful takedown to Tim Lane. Big body kick. Nice combination of kicks there by Nermago Medov. Oh! Huge right hand! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Oh, a huge block there. Under three minutes now to go on the round. trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. And this might just be a matter of time. What a beautiful Kimura finish by this great fighter. And I don't care how high your threshold is for pain. When you're in that compromised state, better to tap and fight another guy. It's so crazy because people think the pressure's on your arm. It's on your shoulder. When somebody has a really good Kimura, it feels like they're going to break your shoulder. That's why you have to tap. Take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard. He's so skilled. He's so tricky, and he's so good at weaving a web that gets you lost in it that he made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory. And there he is, the UFC welterweight champion of the world, what a moment for him here tonight as he earns the victory by submission. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Leving has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 57 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by tap out. And still! So he came in the best welterweight in the world. Nothing changes tonight. Congratulations to the still UFC welterweight champ. He understands that he is the best fighter in the world at 170 pounds, and he proved that tonight.